welcome back to our course on scanning electron ion from microscopy in material characterization. In last several classes on in last several lecture, we have focused on scanning electron microscopy, where electron beam was used to obtain the images or surface topology of the specimen. In addition to that scanning electron microscopy is also being utilized for several other purpose that we have briefly discussed. From today onwards in next few lecture uh, we will be focusing on scanning ion microscopy. Instead of electrons we shall see how the ions interacting with the specimen and producing signal and those signal can be utilized to produce surface topography or surface morphology. In last century, in last century we have seen uh, there are several type of microscopic techniques that has come to existence including scanning electron microscope, transmission electron microscope and there is large varieties of the microscopic technique that has come more than 20, 30 microscopic technique that has been invented in last century. Particularly scanning electron microscopy has been extensively used from 1960 onwards after the discovery of ET detector by Everard Thonley. And we have nowadays extensively using scanning electron microscopy to study the surface topology. In this century, one microscopy that has come to the forefront is helium ion microscope. Helium ion microscope has started uh, not many many years back like from 2000 uh, in 2007 first helium ion microscope was launched and in last uh, 10 15 years 10 12 years we have around 100 such microscope installed worldwide and we shall see how helium ion microscope provides us can provide us uh, surface topology with a much superior quality and in addition to that we will discuss why helium ion microscope could probably one day take over the uh, job that is being done by scanning electron microscope. If we go to the history of ion microscopy, uh, then uh, we can first talk about the de Broglie that means uh, wavelength lambda is equal to h by mb 1923 who um, de who proposed that, that every particle has both wave and particle nature. Then in 1937 there was a theory on use of magnetic field to direct the beam of the electrons, how the electron beam can be condensed and how electron beam can be moved by using the magnetic field. And these two theory in 1923-1937 led to to led to two project at uh, Technical University Berlin, Germany and there were two groups one with Professor Max Knoll and he was investigating on the Bose theory, theory particularly his student Ernest Roska who was studying how uh, the magnetic field can be used to control the electron beam that could therefore be utilized in the electron microscopy. What we have seen in our scanning electron microscope, the condenser lens, objective lens, the theory, the experimental work primarily carried out by Roska, Ernest Roska and then another group uh, in the same university, uh, Professor Gustav Hertz, he was investing on the emission of the electrons from the metal surface. In the scanning electron microscope we have seen field emission gun where electric field is applied to emit the electrons from the surface of the tip. Particularly Erwin Muller, Muller was studying on that, that effect and we will see uh, those the, these two works were done independently separately. Later stage we have seen that both of their work combined in the microscopic technique field emission that means field emission gone is used in microscope similarly electromagnetic lens is used in the microscope. Both these work given um, 
a strong contribution to the electromagnetic to the electron microscopy society or community. Subsequently, after 1930s, uh, uh, there were uh, two world war, and the people started. Uh, the work was not progressed the way that was progressed before, and the Irwin Muller, uh, Irwin Muller, uh, Muller, who has immigrated to USA and joined at uh, Penn State University. There, he started working on the similar area, and that led to discovery of field ion microscope, and he is the first person who observed the image of the atoms with his graduate student Conwar Bahadur an Indian and that led to that discovery led to uh, also that that discovery led to present day helium ion microscope. In between in 1970s Albert Crew also used field emission gun to see the atoms using a scanning transmission electron microscope. So, what you have seen here the Muller contribution to the atomic image is immense. So, there were a time in 70s it was being uh, discussed and it was been thought that both uh, Roska and Muller will receive the Nobel Prize. Actually uh, Roska received the Nobel Prize in 1986 along with Binning and Rohr who have uh, uh, discovered the scanning tunneling microscopy. So, one part of the Nobel Prize was given to uh, Binning and Rohr for discovery of scanning tunneling microscopy, another part was given to Ernest Ruska for his contribution to the electron microscopy. Uh, Muller did not get because in 1977 he unfortunately expired, therefore, uh, he was not received the Nobel Prize uh, for his contribution towards. Uh, creating or getting atomic uh, uh, ima image of the atoms. So, if we look at the um, uh, microscopy brief history of uh, helium ion microscopy, we have to certainly go to the ion microscopy that was discovered by Erwin Muller. Uh, here, this is one of the very uh, simplest uh, microscopy to see the atoms uh, in the middle that you see uh, this, this, this was what you see here. Uh, this is a this is a uh, originally blown glass inside this uh, glass compartment in one side there is an emitter metal emitter that is mostly tungsten and in other this side there is a phosphorus phosphorus. So, this metal metal electrode has a very sharp tip and once you apply a potential once you apply a potential then you will see the emission on the screen. So, and now, in the emission what you see in the screen a pattern like this, a pattern like this a very uniform pattern. So, what is happening here? So, that means, uh, we apply a potential between two electrodes one on the phosphorus screen and another on the metal tips and electrons started to emit keep giving us a pattern or if we have a gases inside in this particular cases uh, we allow some gases to go inside in this uh, particularly helium gases. Uh, in the tip we have a tip at the tip which is a very sharp tip a very high field will form at the tip and when a gaseous atom reach at the tip that will get ionized. Once it get ionized so that would be accelerated towards the phosphorus screen because of the potential difference and that would uh, form a stream of stream of ion particles and that will bombard to the phosphorus screens and providing the light with a particular pattern. So, in this pattern every spot of light every spot of light indicating the presence of one particular atom on the tip of the uh, on the tip of uh, on, uh, on the tip of the uh, electrode one electrodes that means the metal part. So, this way they they have discovered uh, he has discovered this uh, field ion microscopy and with this type of microscope uh, they could uh, successfully obtain a resolution of more than uh, um, more than uh, resolution uh, resolution as best as uh, four angstrom 
So, his, uh, um, his, uh, with his graduate student Kanwar Bahadur uh, using helium ions they could succeed to get a resolution for angstrom that means 0 0.4 nanometer 0 0.4 nanometer in the year 1995 1955 1955 so uh, if 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 we go back to our scanning electron microscopy i have mentioned that resolution of the modern day scanning electron microscopy is around 0 0.5 to uh, 0 0.5 to 1 nanometer now present day resolution of modern day uh, field emission gone scanning electron microscopy resolution resolution is like 0 0.5 to 1 nanometer now you see in 1955 Irwin Muller and Kanwar Bahadur could succeed to get a resolution much better than what we have today. This indicates the importance of ion microscopy in achieving atomic scale resolution. And they have used simple fluorescent screen to see the bright dots which indicates the presence of the atoms. Or at the tip of this uh, tip of this at the tip of the electron. So here in the field emission uh, ion microscopy, uh, it is a uh, schematic diagram. We have uh, that is field uh, that is the tip is nothing but the specimen, and we have a very sharp tip because we have a very sharp tip. There is few atoms at the surface, few atoms of the surface, and when gas goes, those few protruding atoms could ionize those gases and we, we will have a stream of those we, we will have a stream of those ions going and striking to the fluorescence screen and telling us the position of the atom on the specimen and this is the middle one is the first field ion microscopy image of a tungsten 110 tip with a 94 nanometer surface and this is atomic resolution of the peak recorded by that uh, Muller and Bahadur in 1955. Uh, this is happened in 1955 around the year 1955. Subsequently, the Muller uh, moved to uh, another uh, another related uh, field of the microscopy, which is called 3D atom prop tomography, which is called 3D atom prop tomography. So, in the atom prop uh, uh, this 3D atom prop tomography is the only material analysis technique uh, which uh, offers extensive capabilities of both 3D imaging and composition analysis, chemical composition analysis, analysis at the atomic scale. So, uh, approximately this can gives a resolution of uh, uh, 3D dimensional uh, resolution of around uh, uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 nanometer uh, resolution in depth resolution in depth it can provide and also a resolution of 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 nanometer that is partial resolution. So, this atom prop tomography can provide a resolution as good as 0.1 to 0.3 as high as and similarly sp uh, spatial resolution 0.3 to 0.5 very high spatial resolution. As you see uh, here uh, this is a uh, stem scanning transmission electron microscopy annular dark field image of aluminum uh, and 3 percent silver alloy and these are uh, silver spheroidal precipitates and its composition mapping is shown here it is a three dimensional image and we can get three dimensional mapping of composition of a very very small uh, structure or size material. And in this case certainly sample, uh, sample has to be prepared uh, in a with a sharp tip and that uh, sharp tip uh, this uh, uh, atom prop tomography and uh, though in previous uh, uh, previous of the in, uh, in the new dis, uh, in the initial discovery uh, this was a uh, this was a glass uh, uh, 
glass tube, glass vessels, the um, atom prop tomography this is a stainless steel and uh, the student another of his graduate student John Panij and Muller discovered this 3D atom prop tomography. And in these cases the tip has to be very sharp and the tip uh, is biased uh, at a potential of uh, 3 to 15 kilo volt and at the tip there will be a voltage of much higher than that and that would uh, induce a very high electrostatic field. Now using a high voltage pulse or a using a laser beam we can evaporate we can evaporate the uh, tip of tip and then so once we evaporate the tip, tip the atoms will be evaporated and they will they will be flying towards the uh, opposite electrodes with a particular time of flight and by measuring the mass by charge we could measure the composition from the time of flight measurements we can measure the composition in addition to that we can measure the um, 3d image of the uh, specimen so we have in the detector we have a position position sensitive detector we can know where um, the atoms is arriving with a what time of flights so now uh, in in this way uh, a 3d atom prop tomography is also the um, can be called as a cousin of helium ion microscope because it both of them have an ancestor of field ion microscope so how to create an electric high electric field for example we have uh, let's say two uh, um, two conductive uh, concentric circle and one is outside circle one is inside circle and then uh, if we apply a voltage then the potential will be e is equal to v by r where e is the magnitude of potential v is the potential difference between two electrodes and r is the radius of inner sphere r is the radius of inner circle radius of inner circle so now if the r is very small if r is very small that is the tip then we can have a very high potential uh, magnitude of the potential e and that at that potential uh, we can easily uh, create an ion uh, if the gaseous atom uh, come across it uh, but actually the tip will not be circular it will be uh, this will be like hemispherical so as it will be hemispherical it is caused like e is equal to it will be little smaller v by k r where k is approximately 3 little bit smaller the magnitude will be smaller because the tip is actually hemispherical in nature. So, in this way uh, we can uh, have very large uh, field electric field at the tip and thereby that could help us to create ions uh, and those ions can be utilized for microscopic investigation creating the image. So, then uh, this was happened in uh, uh, this uh, um, atom prop tomography also um, uh, developed in 1970s and during that time there was a lot of work on uh, the development of ion microscopy uh, particularly to improve the uh, prop current and also stability of the tip and in 1970s another group Levisetti group achieved, uh, achieved success in using the hydrogen beam to instead of uh, helium they have used hydrogen beam to produce uh, transmission image of variety of the sample and that is nothing but a scanning microscope that is scanning transmission electron micro uh, ion microscope and that code keeps uh, uh, image uh, a different dip, image of different different sample and this is the schematic of uh, his um, ion microscope. Uh, as we are talking about the brief history in uh, 1970 to 1990s there are several groups uh, that uh, uh, work towards the development of the gas field ion source gas field ion source means the development of the tip particularly to develop develop the tip super tip which can have a single atom uh, at its tip because if we have a single atom at its tips then we can get only one uh, beam of ions from the tip and that would allow us to do microscopic studies at the atomic level now getting a one atom of the tip is not an easy tax because uh, that tip uh, can evaporate if it has a little higher field and also uh, second thing that uh, it, um, it has to be highly stable 
So, this therefore, it was uh, not at easy. In addition to that, tip should produce enough ions so that current will be ionic current will be high. So, in 70s to 90s, there was a lot of work on developing super tip. Uh, and in that regard, there was a group at Max Planck Institute also. So, they have also been working on this uh, super tip. During that time, there was a company, uh, Micreon Corporation, uh, they, they were involved in uh, gallium liquid metal ion source, gallium liquid metal ion source for the use in semiconductor and uh, semiconductor and storage indus industries. So, they got interested because they thought uh, that this type of ion source would be much useful for their uh, for their uh, uh, for their company uh, and for their product and so first commercial interest was uh, shown by micreon corporation to develop the tip for ion microscopy then in 1999 uh, this fei uh, company field electron ion uh, company that is a microscopy company that acquired micreon and worked to improve this gas field ion source uh, uh, ion source lifetime and stability. As I was telling, the lifetime of the tip has to be more to um, utilize it uh, in a real application. Then in 2002, FEI uh, chose to spin this project to an external R&D team, uh, which is uh, under the acronym of Atomic Level Ion Source, ELIS, ELIS company, a new company was started. Uh, was given this task of developing uh, the tip which can be used for the purpose. The Ellis Corporation uh, started developing the tip uh, and they found that uh, there is they found a way to make uh, they have given up producing the super tip uh, of the, or very sharp tip rather they started working on how to produce a reliable tip which could keep current uniformly. Uh, uniformly for a longer time. And they, uh, they have obtained a uh, process that forms a trimer uh, that is automatically, automatically um, uh, trimer that is auto, uh, form automatically at the tip through the facetting. This, is a, this was a tungsten tip and they found they, um, uh, they have achieved a condition at uh, which uh, the tip will automatically do the facetting and the faceted uh, trimer give rise to an electric field uh, that peaks at the apex and diminishes in the surrounding region. And at this uh, trimer there will be three atoms, at the, at the trimer there will be three atoms uh, as you see here three atoms producing in the emission and, uh, and below which there is another layer of uh, tungsten atoms that will be a hexagon type and that has much lower emission here. So, it uh, this three atoms uh, called as a trimer at it is nothing but the three side of a pyramid and that tips was found to be quite stable and pr pr producing uniform uh, emission of the ion. So, this Ellis company uh, um, by 2005 uh, they came up with this kind of uh, tip uh, this kind of tip that could produce that could be stable and produced. So, then in uh, 2007, uh, Ellis Corporation was acquired by Zeiss. Zeiss is another microscopy company and it improved the technology uh, to a high performance uh, gas field ion source. So, under the Zeiss banner, uh, the first helium ion microscope was uh, uh, produced and it was shipped to NIST and uh, the first ion microscope uh, started to working functioning at the NIST and in the next 5 years there were steady improvements on those, uh, those uh, helium ion microscope and then it allows to produce image with a resolution 0.35 nanometer. So, this is a second generation helium ion microscope uh, Orion plus. This is what you see a scanning helium ion microscopic images. Uh, left side is a kidney cell imaged with a 5 nanometer field of view. So, it, it is one of the important point here is that helium ion microscope does not require a conductive coating, which would otherwise obscure the finer details. If you remember 
in our scanning electron microscopy the sample has to be conducting. If the sample is not conducting, we do a metal coating on this specimen to make it conducting to see the surface feature. Otherwise, there will be charging and charging, charging create disturbances and that would not produce uh, the image with much higher clarity. Uh, in case of helium microscope, we could get very high magnification, high resolution image of insulating sample as that you see here. Here in the right side two image, one is a carbon nanotube by uh, that is produced uh, from the secondary electron uh, that is a secondary electron image produced by electron beam that is in SEM and in the right side you see a uh, you see a image in a helium ion microscope it is again secondary electron image produced in a helium ion microscope. You see the difference in the image quality of a helium ion, helium, helium ion microscope and scanning electron microscope. There is a large difference in the clarity and uh, of the three dimensional features of the specimen. So, that, uh, if we look at the basic requirement to achieve the high resolution uh, in a scanning beam microscope, first is that uh, prop diameter, prop diameter, prop diameter should be as small as possible, then only we collect information from a smaller area when we collect information or signal from a smaller area then the resolution can be better. So, so we can collect like two features placed very close to each other and if we collect the information signal differently then we can know their brightness contrast difference and that would tell us about the individual uh, uh, points or particles present in the sample. So, as close as them our resolution will be better because resolution is nothing but the closest spacing between two objects or points that could be seen clearly or distinctly in the microscope. So, our electron beam falling to the specimen should be as small as possible. If the electron beam falling on a bigger size, then information will come from those area. We would not be able to know that the information or signal is coming from two small particles or small object. First, it should be as small as possible. Second is interaction volume. Interaction volume, if you remember in, in our SCM, interaction volume it, it is come from the top 5 to 10 nanometer surface. So, interaction volume is if the interaction volume is more, which is not suitable because in backscattered electrons again come from a larger area, here backscattered electrons come from here. Secondary electrons comes from a smaller area, therefore, secondary electrons gives us better resolution as compared to the backscattered electrons. So, interaction volume should be as small as possible. Signal to good enough to create image. Though prop diameter can be made as small as possible, as fine as possible in case of electron beam equipment also, but the signal we get may not be enough to see the uh, brightness difference. So, signal should be good enough to create image. So, these are the three important points or requirement to achieve the high resolution imaging in a scanning beam mic microscope. So, in that respect, our scanning electron microscope satisfy to a great extent, but it has certain limitation such as like resolution of the scanning electron microscope is limited by the diameter of the beam of the electron brought to focus at the specimen. So, we can so at present we can have uh, beam uh, resolution of 0.5 to, to 1 nanometer that means our beam size is of almost like in the similar range. And we have reached to absolute limit of the imaging performance with scanning electron microscope and by reducing further it, it is not going to help us more because the prop current will decrease and it cannot produce enough signal so that we can create an image. So, SEM has come to its uh, uh, to its saturation regarding the prop size and prop current. So, as small as we can get like 0.5 to 1 nanometer using the SEM. So, what uh, we ha I have discussed today, the origin of uh, ion microscope comes from the field ion microscope which wh on which uh, Erwin Muller began working since 1930s. A breakthrough on the development of the gas field ionization source tip was made in 2007 by Ellis Corporation uh, leading to a robust and reliable tip which made the commercialization of helium ion microscope. Commercialization begins from 2007 
and helium ion microscope has potential to replace scanning electron microscope in near future because of its superior resolution and other performance. So, that is what the important conclusion of today introduction lecture and we will discuss more on the uh, helium ion microscope in our next lecture. These are the references. Thank you.